member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to rise today and contribute to the debate on Bill C-43, <clears throat> Economic Action Plan 2014, Act No. 2. I'll be focusing my remarks today on three fundamental components of Economic Action Plan 2014 that will have a true and lasting impact in Canada and in my riding of Don Valley West namely investing in skills and training, uh, supporting entrepreneurship and innovation, and support for small businesses. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, since 2006, our government's top priority has been jobs and economic growth. And while Canada has the best job growth record in the G7, too many Canadians are still looking for work or are underemployed. Indeed, an increasing number of jobs across Canada are going unfilled due to a lack of people with the right skills. That is why Economic Action Plan 2014 introduces new measures to support skills training and to connect Canadians with available jobs. This includes implementing the Canada Job Grant, which will connect Canadians looking for skills training and a job with employers looking for skilled workers. This also includes creating the Canada Apprenticeship Loan, which will provide apprentices in registered Red Seal trades with access to over $100 million in interest-free loans each year. Economic Action Plan 2014 will, will strengthen the apprenticeship system by introducing the Flexibility and Innovation in Apprenticeship Technical Training Pilot Project to develop new approaches to expand training for apprentices. It also will ensure that Canadians are first in line for available jobs by launching an enhanced job matching service <clears throat> to match job seekers and employers on the basis of skills, knowledge and experience. On this note, Mr. Speaker, the government has a strong record of support for apprentices and the employers that hire them. Through the Apprenticeship Incentive Grant, the Apprenticeship Completion Grant, the trade person's tool deduction uh, tax uh, and the apprenticeship job creation tax credit, our government has provided tangible support for apprentices and the employers that hire them. But that's not all. Our government has also extended the fees eligible for the tuition tax credit to include those from examinations required to be certified as a trades person in Canada. We have made an effort to use apprentices in federal construction and maintenance contracts, and we have encouraged provinces, territories, and municipalities to support the use of apprentices in infrastructure projects that receive federal funding. Mr. Speaker, our government also is supporting Canadians with disabilities who are looking for meaningful and fulfilling work by making key investments in the Ready, Willing, and Able initiative. On the same token, our government will be creating vocational training programs for persons with autism spectrum disorders. Even more, in 2013-14, our government invested $2.7 billion to support skills and training programs. This includes $1.95 billion to provinces and territories through labour market development agreements, $500 million to provinces and territories through labour market agreements, which were introduced in Budget 07, and $218 million to provinces through labour market agreements for persons with disabilities. Since 2006, Mr. Speaker, our government has provided support for skills training for youth through the Youth Employment Strategy, with investments of over $330 million per year. We have also provided skills training for persons with disabilities through the Opportunities Fund, with annual investments of $40 million per year and for older Canadians through the Targeted in Initiative for Older Workers and the Third Quarter Project. Economic Action Plan 2014 builds on these successes. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes that entrepreneurship and innovation are key to Canada's future prosperity. By supporting innovation, our businesses will become more productive and will continue to fuel job creation and economic growth in Canada. That is why Economic Action Plan 2014 introduces new measures to support entrepreneurship and innovation 
by making a landmark investment in post-secondary education. Through the creation of the Canada First Research Excellence Fund, $1.5 billion over the next decade will be made available to Canadian post-secondary institutions. This investment will secure Canada's international leadership in science and innovation. Economic Action Plan 2014 also supports leading-edge research by investing $46 million a year ongoing to granting councils across Canada in support of advanced research and scientific discoveries. Further, our government will be fostering world-leading research by investing $222 million in the Triumph Physics Laboratory to support leading research and launching cutting-edge spin-off companies. Our government will also support technological innovation by investing $15 million in support of the Institute of Quantum, Quantum Computing for research and commercialization of quantum technologies, and $3 million to support the creation of the Open Data Institute. Mr. Speaker, these and other investments build on our government's strong record of support for entrepreneurs and fostering innovation in Canada. Since 2006, our government has invested over $11 billion in new funding to support entrepreneurship and innovation, including more than $2.3 billion to support advanced research through the federal granting councils. Our government has also provided funding to support cutting-edge post-secondary research infrastructure through the Canada Foundation for Innovation and to universities and colleges for repairs, maintenance and constru construction through the Knowledge Infrastructure Program. Mr. Speaker, our Conservative government recognizes the vital role small businesses play in the economy and job creation. That's why we are committed to helping them grow and succeed. Through Economic Action Plan 2014, our government will invest $15 million for up to 1,000 post-secondary graduates to intern in small and medium-sized businesses across Canada. We will also maintain the freeze on employment insurance premiums in order to provide certainty and flexibility for small businesses in the years ahead. Our government is also working to cut the red tape burden. We are doing this by eliminating over 800,000 payroll deduction remittances to Canada Revenue Agency made every year by over 50,000 small businesses. Mr. Speaker, Economic Action Plan 2014 builds on our government's significant action to support small businesses since 2006, which includes reducing the small business tax rate from 12 percent to 11 percent, lowering the federal corporate in income tax rate to 15 percent to help create jobs and economic growth for Canadian families and communities, and eliminating the corporate surtax for all corporations in 2008, which was particularly beneficial to small business corporations as the surtax represented a larger proportion of their overall payable tax. All this to say, Mr. Speaker, that a typical small business with $500,000 of taxable income now saves $28,600 as a direct result of our Conservative government's low tax plan. Mr. Speaker, Economic Action Plan 2014 is great news for my constituents in Don Valley West and to all the small and medium-sized businesses that sustain our growing economy. I urge all members of the House to join me in supporting jobs, growth, and long-term economic prosperity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.